filmmakers' experiences are diverse. There are some people who were trained on the ground. For me, I've had to sit under people and I've had to listen. And from that, I have sort of discovered my artistic identity. You know, I'm talking to you right now and I'm realizing there is nothing, there is no turning point in my life in filmmaking wise that has happened without DocuBox since 2019. I'm only just realizing that right now. My name is Eric Mwangi and I'm a film director and cinematographer. My background in film started with cinematography and then pivoted into directing. And so for me, directing has always been an end goal. I am still a cinematographer in practice today. And um, yeah, that's why I am. Well, my journey into film um, can be attributed to the fact that I've always been a storyteller from, from way back. But by that time, I used to spend a lot of time in front of the TV. And then when a movie ends, I, always, I was always curious to see the next film. But then there used to be these words that keep rolling up the screen. And they used to bore me because they used to take so long. It's only later on that I found that after a film has touched me, that those, those names and those words that keep scrolling up the screen were film credits. And they paid. They were like a... They were like a tes testimony to the people who actually told the story that has just touched my heart. And that changed my perspective completely. And so from wanting to maybe act and do skits and be a cartoon, as my mom used to call me and other relatives, I found out that I wanted to be the, the person who actually makes films. And by the time I was clearing high school, I started looking around and I remember going to the Nairobi University looking for a course that could actually do this and there was none. And I found it at Kenyatta University. I enrolled. It was an amalgamation of theatre and film with no specialty. And that's, I, I just had to enroll there because there were no film schools at that time. Right, Kenyatta University did not initially have a film programme. I think they had just started. I don't know what made them realise that they need uh, a course in filmmaking. But when they began, I remember a lot of the lecturers who were teaching us at that time and the professors who were there were not people who've studied film. And so it was a lot more theoretical than practical. And for that season, I think it was, it was proper for someone like me to go into, you know, the theory bit of it and to learn what, what filmmaking is in theory. There may be some arguments about whether film school was the right way to go or not. I think for me, I, I, can't, I can't dismiss it because of the context where I'm coming from. I'm in Kenya right now. So you, you, what, whatever you can take in this moment, take it and find a way to expose yourself to the industry to sort of like try and bridge, create a bridge. The other thing that happened after that was uh, I think one of my friends uh, got hired by DocuBox to be an intern. And I think at that time DocuBox was new and fresh and it was just starting. And I didn't pay much attention to it because for me, I didn't want to work at that time. I also thought... Um, I thought of like what I'm getting in school is what's, is what's going to get me out there properly. And honestly, I can say that I was wrong because I was being close-minded at that time. Because even after the four years, I, I don't think I was equipped Kabisa to work in the industry. And so I was exposed to uh, One Finder Films under the film supermodel. And I was there training as a camera assistant. And I remember saying to my camera assistant mentor, she, yeah, she's called Yana Fitzna. And I told her, I really enjoy DP work. 
But if I look myself, myself at 50 years old, directing is what I want to do. And cinematography is going to be a, is good for me to be a gateway into directing. And I was exposed to filmmaking within one month that sort of wiped out everything I had learned in four years. Because there, you are actually getting what industry standard is. You know, like the taste of, of filmmaking outside. Like, so this is what Nairobi Half-Life went through when they were making. And so my eyes were being opened at that time. And after that is when now I would enter into the commercial world as a camera assistant. Until now, I got an opportunity to direct TV commercials at an agency in Ethiopia. So in coming back, there was a training that was being done by DocuBox that had to do with storytelling for NGOs, non-profits. DocuBox was housing that boot camp. And it was, the, I remember the, 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 the goal of the workshop was that to enable filmmakers to be able to make money out of their work. What else does a filmmaker need? I think that's all you need. To be able to tell honest stories and make a living out of it, to be able to eat, to be able to feed your family and all that. And so since then, my relationship with DocuBox has just gained more layers, more layers, more layers. It's 2019 and I've just come, from, I've just come back from Addis uh, doing commercials. We've done this workshop and um, DocuBox decides that they are going to fund the, a training where someone comes and uh, Gabriel came and he gave us the expertise that he gave us. It doesn't end there. You know, most trainings end at you've come and you've sat somewhere for four days. You've been given the tools and that's the end of it. But this training had something more. You were actually given an organization and you were funded to film that organization. So that organization, all they needed to do was open their doors to you to come and film them. Man, I think that just broke me because you don't come across such trainings for such young people like us. So that, that workshop happened between 2019 into November 2019 and the, the work spilled over into June of May, May of 2020. At that time, COVID had just hit. And so, <clears throat> with the documentary training that I had, I stumbled on a story that needed um, a story about a young woman, 27-year-old Dr. Jemima Karioki, who is responding to a crisis that has been created by the government responding to another crisis. So with the training that I had received, I was looking to do the same type of documentary but keeping the channels open between DocuBox and I and what I would like to do, they sort of suggested a more observational approach. And after that call, they called me back and they told me, Eric, your instinct concerning this story is spot on. Don't waste this opportunity. You have never shot observational documentary before. Let us give you at least a bit of training or introduce you to filmmakers who have worked with DocuBox before, have succeeded, and actually in this in this kind of filmmaking that you're doing so that you can get the right advice and um, for that particular project i remember in short stints docubox would support me with funds during covid coming now into 2021 we had to stop filming because my subject at that time had just delivered their first firstborn child and she was taking a break and so i stopped filming and i gathered my footage together and i shared it with um, the filmmakers that had been exposed to, Pete Muremi and Sam Soko, and they looked at me and they told me, Eric, this is what you're going to do. You will not edit this documentary. If you edit it, you will ruin it. This is a sacred project that you need to treat with the utmost respect. So you need to look for an observational documentary editor. And that's where now DocuBox introduced me to Reg Chuhi, who's based in New York. And she was able to look at my documentary and put together some scenes so that I can pitch them out. I was introduced by uh, Judy Kibinge to a guy from the US Embassy who was looking for documentaries by first-time documentary filmmakers that are observational in style 
and had no structure. Now my footage was in my hard drive and had not been expanded to create uh, a structure. It turns out that that opportunity was being fronted by the American Film Showcase under their Film Diplomacy Program, which was being funded by the State, State Department, the US. And they invited me over to uh, California under the University of Southern California, um, their film department, where I was able to workshop the documentary and even pitch to people like POV, Higher Grounds Productions, which is Obama's, the Obama's uh, production, production house. Cine Rich was there listening to my story and MSNBC was in the building as well. And this workshop was like a, another incubation period where you get to whip your project and create a structure out of it. And at the end of two weeks, you have, you have substance to use as a pitch. What happened on the pitch day was everything that Judy Kibinge had told me concerning pitching, concerning editing the documentary sort of came to bear on that final day. Because then I saw how observational doc should be edited or how the stories should be told while still maintaining the truth of the story and the integrity of the character that you're trying to portray. And I came back from that um, a better filmmaker, a more intentional and more deliberate filmmaker, a more honest filmmaker also. And this is why the kind of trainings that DocuBox does is very, they are very important. Because I know that kind of place is sort of like an accelerant, like a catalyst. It, it sort of bridges whatever you'd get in three years in like a year. You get it within like a year or like a few months or a few days. So I don't think since 2019 there is a project that I have done that hasn't had the hand of DocuBox in one way or another. So there's a lot of favor uh, on that side. And that's, that's where I am today. That is a fictional film in the works and an observational documentary in the works both of which have been touched by DocuBox in one way or another.